Formula One's driver market can be a turbulent affair, but it's usually free of the big money moves that can make off seasons in other sports so chaotic and explosive. With such major emphasis on the quality of the car in F1, the big bucks get invested in making one that can go as quickly as possible, and the people employed to drive it can easily become an afterthought. So why are championship bosses seemingly so keen on implementing a driver salary cap, similar to how sports in the United States limit what their athletes can earn? Especially when the spending patterns and influence of these salaries are massively different in F1 versus sports with more than just two sports people per team. F1 has its justifications, but this could be a more entertaining rule than it looks on the surface. It has the potential to force teams to choose between top talent or developing their cars more, and the knock-on effect will be an even more dynamic driver market as teams weigh up a major additional variable in how they spend their cash. I'm Scott Mitchell for The Race, you are most welcome to be here, especially if you're a subscriber, and this is F1's potentially controversial cost-saving measure that could accidentally spice up the driver market. What's F1's idea? Formula One has unanimous team support for a $30 million salary cap across each driver lineup, which would be introduced in 2023. The prospect of limiting driver earnings is a controversial and unconventional move in non-US sports. But it is now well enshrined in America's basketball, football and hockey leagues, where teams have a certain amount of money to spend on their entire roster. Major League Baseball has a pseudo cap called a luxury tax, which is a fee for spending over a certain limit. F1's already going down the spending cap route with a wider team budget cap of $145 million from next season, which will reduce to $140 million in 2022 and $135 million in 2023. Presently, those caps exclude the drivers and the top three executive salaries, but from 2023, the team's spending cap could be supplemented by a $30 million soft cap on the driver lineup. A soft cap is when there is a limit that has exceptions. In this case, teams can pay their drivers more, but it would come out of their main budget cap. So, for example, in 2023, the team's main budget cap will be $135 million plus $30 million for the two drivers. But if Mercedes wanted to pay Lewis Hamilton $25 million and Valtteri Bottas $15 million, a combined spend of $40 and $10 above the cap, it would be allowed to do so, but it would then only have $125 million rather than $135 million to spend through the season. In US sports, salary cap proponents argue that the limit stops a big money team from building an incredible roster and monopolising the competition, which maintains a competitive balance for fans and benefits the league as a whole. But for F1, the end product would be slightly different, a further step in bringing team spending under control. How it can spice up the driver market The wiggle room for a team to subtract a driver's excessive salary from the team's spending means there is a mechanism for drivers to still bank a big deal if they can convince the team they're worth a few million dollars more compared to spending that money on aero development or manufacturing. Taking the hit from the overall team spending to pay for a better driver would directly impact development work on that season's car and the one that follows. At some stage there will be a crossover point that if you invest in a driver you can't invest in your car. In all likelihood most teams needn't worry about this just yet. The current lineups of Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull are almost certain to exceed the $30 million limit, while McLaren, Renault and Racing Point potentially run the risk of creeping towards it given the blend of A-list and Youngster in their lineups at the moment. Alfa Tauri, Alfa Romeo, Haas and Williams would not be anywhere near it. And in theory, the likelihood that teams would sacrifice their competitiveness is low. It's the same in the US. In the NBA, teams can pay up to 35% of their total salary cap each to two players. But putting two players on a combined 70% of your entire salary cap would leave you just 30% for the rest of the roster, and that means building a good team is very difficult, if not impossible. So it isn't really worth it, and it wouldn't be in Formula 1 either if a team was able to attract the services of Hamilton or Max Verstappen but leave themselves building a 2019 Williams. However, if F1's 2022 rules overhaul works and the teams get closer, then suddenly the driver can make a big difference, and the question of sacrificing a tenth or two of ultimate performance in the car versus having a Daniel Ricciardo or a Lewis Hamilton or a Max Verstappen versus a Pierre Gasly or an Esteban Ocon becomes very interesting. Where it gets even more tantalising is that according to Haas team boss Gunter Steiner, the ultimate goal is to force teams to balance spending on drivers and spending on developing the car, which hints at the cap coming down further in the future. Now this provides some fun driver market opportunities. 
Theoretically, it would put more drivers in the picture when it comes to a team weighing up their options, particularly with the second seats at bigger teams. And there would be a potential knock-on effect whereby a very strong number two driver is suddenly available because the bigger team is pairing an A-lister with a cheaper supporting act. Returning to our hypothetical Hamilton Bottas 2023 scenario, if Mercedes knew that it could keep Hamilton, but it wasn't willing to overspend on drivers because it wants to maximise team spending, then it could opt to drop Bottas and sign George Russell, who would command a lower salary. That would give Russell a fantastic career opportunity while simultaneously putting a driver of Bottas's quality on the market, and a lesser team could swoop for him, offering him a bigger salary to be its number one. Is it fair on drivers? F1 will do well if its 2020 revenue is even half of what it managed in 2019 because to compensate for spectators not being allowed at most races during the coronavirus pandemic, circuits haven't been paying their usual fees and revenues have dropped significantly. So the F1 pie is smaller and thus the slices that go to each of the teams have reduced as well, and some see no reason why driver salaries shouldn't be reduced in kind. But the impact on the drivers themselves shouldn't be ignored. Leading athletes in other sports are capable of earning tens and tens of millions every year, so how will this cap limit driver earnings in reality, and how will they be allowed to earn their worth? In the US, athletes build on lower base salaries with colossal private endorsement deals. NBA star LeBron James has for many years earned considerably more from sponsorship off-court than he has for his base salary for appearing on it. How that would work in F1 is trickier because there's limited scope for individual brand exercises. Hamilton's largely on his own in that arena because of his off-track profile, although the likes of Verstappen have their own endorsement deals as well. One potential workaround for a salary cap would be for a team sponsor to bolster a driver's pay with a deal on their side. But this sort of circumvention is outlawed in the US, and a similar system would almost certainly be employed in F1 to avoid the rules being manipulated. That would require F1 to get serious with the penalties. For example, in the NBA, sanctions for violating player salary rules include fines up to $10 million, forfeiture of draft picks, team executive suspensions, and tearing up player contracts. F1 could get similarly aggressive and adapt it to its own circumstances by threatening to dock constructors' championship points, award race bans, or even consider outright exclusions. The hurdles that must be overcome for this concept to become a reality aren't exactly known, but Red Bull team boss Christian Horner is hinted at all kinds of legal ramifications that will determine whether it can actually be implemented. Red Bull is an interesting case because it currently has Verstappen signed to a multi-year deal that includes 2023, and the same goes for Ferrari and Charles Leclerc, whose contract includes 2024. So if a salary cap comes in for 2023, will those deals, which presumably include some very, very favourable terms for Verstappen and Leclerc given they have tempted them into long-term commitments, be exempt from the first year of the salary cap? Or will those teams be forced to accept a budget cap reduction to continue to pay Verstappen and Leclerc what they've promised? There's still an awful amount of detail to establish before this becomes a reality, and whether that exhausting path is worth following depends on whether F1 believes this is a necessary or beneficial path to follow. But what do you think about a potential driver salary cap? Let us know in the comments below, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to The Race for more of our videos in the future.